Look at that rain. Whoa. Man. And I had to walk through. I got wet just coming out here and I was underneath that cover. Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, the world's greatest redneck. And, uh, whew. I didn't know it was raining like that. I looked out on my security cameras before I came downstairs and it was just wet outside and I didn't see any rain. And by the time I got downstairs and got my shoes on, it was really letting loose out there. This is the cow in the flat rock example kind of rain, you know. But anyway, uh, Dave M, he's got the uh, mini machine shop uh, channel. I'm not sure if I remember the exact right name of the channel. I'll put it down down there. Um, anyway, he said that I ought to show people uh, a little video on broaching. Now this has been done by some really smart people already. So, you know, I'm coming out here to do it. And I, it's kind of scary for me because I got a lot of competition to keep up there just to make a, an average good <laughs> broaching video but we're going to dig into it and uh, just in as much as this is getting to be the end of the year is Christmas time I imagine there's an awful lot of us are a little strapped for cash and uh, that reminds me of this redneck philosopher I knew one time he told me he says you know boy he says uh, life's a lot like a manure sandwich the more bread you got the better it tastes I had to agree with him there Although I never had one of those sandwiches, but I can see where it would improve it. <laughs> anyway, while I'm here and got the chance, I want to wish all you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and, and try to stay away from the virus. Now we really will get on with the video. One of the best ways of, sh of securing a pulley onto a shaft is for it to have a, a key in it. Usually they make a key with... Uh, a set screw to go down and hold the, the key way in and there's of course a key way in the shaft this is for one of those ribbed belts uh, it's a little rusty looking but it'd clean up nice just like old man sometimes here's another pulley you can see it's got the, the key way in it maybe it's better seen from behind this looks a lot like a uh, craftsman lathe pulley <laughs> I had to buy a new one because something got messed up with it and I forget what it was. Anyway, so if you want to put a keyway in a in a pulley, you need a brooch set. This is a I think what it said a number 10 brooch set. And it, it has brooches from 1 8 inch to 3 8 inch and bushings from a half inch to an inch and a half. And what you do with these bushings push the bushing down in the I just reamed that to a half inch all right down in your pulley and the, the brooch itself is tapered it's narrower at this end than this end so each tooth sticks out just a little further than one than the one below it and that means that as it comes in each tooth will cut a little bit deeper uh, groove in the in the uh, pulley for your keyway or it might be something else besides a pulley. Now you can you can make your own bushings. There goes that phone again. Hang on. I don't know where I left off, but uh, anyway, when we go to push the brooch through this thing, it goes in like that, and we just push it right through there, and it'll cut a nice slot. Then the second time around. You usually take two trips to get to cut the right depth. Then you'll use a shim, which I've got a, a package of them here. And you just put the shim back in the back of the slot. Put your brooch in there. And it pushes out closer to the outside and you cut it a little bit deeper. We may do it just right on this one. We may not, depending on how it looks. Now, you can even make your, your own bushings if you, if you need one that's the size that you don't have. You can see it's pretty simple. It's a, it's a piece of metal with a shoulder on this end and a slot that runs all the way through it for the, for the brooch. When I was making these gears 
for uh, for my uh, Craftsman lathe, I needed to broach keyways. In fact, I needed to broach keyways on each side. This is one of the bushings that uh, goes on in, under the gear, and it's got two ears. So, well, you got to line it up here. There we go. I don't know why it's got those two ears, but it does, and it runs on uh, on the bushing that's in the middle of the gear. I guess that's to keep from wearing out the gear, and I guess the two key ways to sort of be even. I don't know. I have no idea why, but so you can see, I could put a brooch in there and have trouble lining it up, or. I could make my own brooch, which I did, I mean my bushing, and this one, I went in and I, I broached out one keyway, and then I turned it, took it out, deburred everything, turned it around, and put a key in there, okay, and I had made this so they would be exactly on opposite sides from one another, and then I could broach the other side. This brooch is just a, this bushing's a little bit deeper than it really needs to be, I think. But anyway, that kept the kept the keyways aligned with each other. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this imaginary pulley. I didn't have a pulley that needs, uh, you know, any kind of attention. We're going to take this imaginary pulley and we're going to broach the little booger. You can broach uh, in a arbor press, which I think is probably the best thing to use. Or you can do it with a hydraulic press. I like the arbor press because you can feel, you know, how much pressure you're putting on stuff. And if you start to get a little crooked, the pressure will come up. And you can't tell that with a hydraulic press. I mean, the hydraulic press just pulls on through everything. Okay? So, let me get set up here and we'll see what we can do about cutting the bushing. I mean, cutting the keyway. All right, so I've lubricated it with Redneck WD-40, which is, we all know, is diesel. <laughs> and uh, we're going to take this hydraulic press, and we're going to press this thing through there. And I know I said that that I prefer a, uh, a har an arbor press, but the fact of the matter is my arbor press is too small, and it won't fit this. I'm glad I had time to stand here and talk a little bit because I wasn't level there either. All right, so the valve on my press is around behind, so I'm going to have to walk around here. All right, I've got the uh, the press set, the valve closed, and uh, we'll start pushing this guy through there. And it's always good once you've gone through it a little ways to stop, ease the pressure up, and let the thing have a chance to align, which I'm going to do. I'm sure it would have been better if I'd been on the other side of the head of press turned around. But anyway, as you can see, we're already starting to get our keyway cut. Now I'm going to turn it around just in the event that things might be starting to get a little, a little less than straight. This is to, to help me improve things. And we're going to put a, a spacer in there. And then this looks like the narrow end. Getting right straight on that again. Okay, <clears throat> so I rolled the thing over and put the bushing in from the other side. And we'll make our last cut from, uh, from the back side just to make sure that we don't get a crooked uh, keyway. And by crooked, I mean 
deeper on one side than on the other. I have had that happen. Come through again with chips in the teeth and we should have a good keyway. All right we're back over here to where we started and you can see that we now have a keyway in our imitation pulley. I've got a, a little burr on the, on the thing I'll have to file off but that, there's always a burr there when you cut one. There was a burr on both sides and I filed them off. But anyway, I don't have a piece of key stock this size on hand right now to demonstrate fitting it in there, but trust me, it'll fit. Now that we've cut ourselves a keyway and got everything all nice, let's, uh, let's just go see what Bubba's doing. No tell him what he's up to. Bubba was down seeing his doctor for some kind of minor problem. Well, he's there, he says, you know, doctor, he says, I think Bobby Sue's getting kind of hard of hearing. He says, well, what do you reckon I can do about that? And the doctor says, well, he says, I'll tell you what, he says, you need to find out, you know, how, how serious your problem is, you know, so we can figure out what to do from there. He says, when you get home, stand about 15 foot from her and say something to her, and if she doesn't hear you, move in another five foot and say it again, and you know, move up, keep moving up closer until she, you know, until she hears you and says something. But I said, what? That there's plumb smart. I'll do that. So he goes home and he's about, I don't know, 20 foot from Bobby Sue. And he says, hey, baby, what's for supper? She don't say nothing. He moves in another five feet. Hey, baby, uh, what's for supper? He still don't hear nothing out of her. Moves in another five feet. Baby, what's for supper? So he moves in again. He's right up behind her. And he says, baby, well, what's for supper? And she turns around and looks at him right now. I said, Bubba, dang it, for the fourth time, we're having taters and greens. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.